Hi there. Um, welcome to my mini tutorial, uh, Painting Miniatures, the Absolute Basics. Uh, what this tutorial is going to be on is um, the very th first things that you need to do to prepare your miniatures before you can paint them. Um, this is for those absolute newbies, people who may have only painted a couple of miniatures before and weren't very happy or have yet to start painting miniatures but want to but don't know how to go about it. Um, and so this tutorial will cover basically the essential things that you need to know. Um, so to begin, you'll need a couple of things. You will need one very sharp hobby knife, any type, and a pair of hobby pliers. Um, the sharp edged variety. These ones um, have a very straight cut and, and make life very easy when taking, say, plastic miniatures off sprues. <coughs> Excuse me. When taking the plastic miniatures off the sprues. Okay, so um, just to, to show you, I picked these up on, on eBay. They're um, semantic elves. Now, whoever did this um, ha has sort of rushed, um, rushed through it all. You can see quite clearly here um, that all the shiny bit, that's glue that's, that's spilled out everywhere from where they've attached the arms and the head. On the knife here, there's this, this bit here is the flashing. The sword hasn't been cleaned properly. Under his arms here, um, this is where the sprue was connected. Okay, um, and the same thing on the bases. There are still bits and pieces, oops, sorry. There are still bits and pieces of where it was connected to the base. Now this, when you try and paint, um, these things, these things are going to ruin the appearance of your miniature. So it's it's really important um, to prepare them properly before you start to paint. And this is the boring bit, but it's probably one of the most important parts of of doing your miniature. So we'll begin. For this example, um, I actually prefer metal miniatures, um, but I do have some plastic. So I'm I'm just going to show you how to go about taking his stuff off the sprues. These ones are uh, Tau... Oh, I think they're um, Tau battle suits of some description. Um, 40k players will probably be laughing at me at this point saying I know exactly what they are. Um, these have been in my bits box for some time. I do tend to collect um, odds and ends. Um, that come up on eBay, just never really knowing, you know, when they'll come in handy. So, but, but we'll just, to begin, we'll show you how to go about um, doing this. So, as you can see, they are connected to the sprue um, by these little channels that connect to the miniatures. So, when you're taking your miniatures off the, the sprue, it's, it's very important that you be very careful. Um, clip always clip the um, if, if, if it's located at three points always clip the one that is the the least uh, that has the, the least resistance so you can just clip those off so now he's just attached to the two sprues you don't want to clip say these ones off leaving this one because it can often tear and bend um, and will damage the miniature so the same thing, flat edge, always to the base of the miniature, clip, one more time, clip, it just comes off, but as you can see, he's still got um, a little bit of uh, where the sprue was connected here, okay. And just on the top and also you can see that running down the side of the miniature there there's a mole line this is this happens on all miniatures this is just where um, this is just where the the two halves of the plastic meet so but 
you need to look out for these and get rid of them because when you paint they're going to become really really noticeable so what we'll do now is we'll just I'll just quickly uh, take the rest of the miniatures off the sprue so we need the two halves of his body so once again held here this bits actually free at the moment I've I've clipped a few of these off before always try and make sure that you are flush with the miniature so that when you clip it there's only a little bit left so once again the same here and here always hold the miniature too because you don't want it warping um, just throw that away okay so we need the other side which is this one so this only has um, this only has two here so once again hold hold the part flat end to the miniature just clip those off take the last little one off there off it goes okay now arms and hands so we have here a left arm and a right arm Let's again hold the part and just as close as you can nice and gently clip it off and the other one and I think that's enough for now give you an idea um, I cannot stress enough obviously when you're using your hobby knife be very very careful it is very very easy to take off parts of yourself when you're doing this um, so you should always make sure that you have a cutting mat on whatever surface that you're using um, and you should every tutorial you see will say cut away from yourself um, this is very true and also very hard to do you have to be exceptionally careful I tend to cut towards myself with a knife I don't recommend this um, but there are ways that you can minimize the danger so firstly when holding your knife I always hold it like this so only your fingers are moving the knife blade you do not have a huge range of movement it cannot slip too far With holding the miniature in one hand your thumb goes on one part of the miniature the knife in the other you can see the mole lines so first of all we'll remove the flashing and you just scrape the knife across the miniature very gently to remove it doesn't take a lot especially with these plastic miniatures and like here you can just scrape away from yourself and I'm doing this very lightly I'm barely touching the miniature it doesn't matter if it takes a little bit of time it's far better that you take a bit more time here than try and rush through it because guaranteed if you try and rush through it you're going to score the miniature and you're going to do more damage than um, than just removing the mole lines you'll take gouges out of it um, and then they're hard to fix and they make the miniature look quite nasty so as you can see here I'm just ever so gently moving the knife it's also flat to my thumb um, when you don't follow these rules like I didn't the other day well the other week you slice through your thumb that was not fun and was most most painful because the knife itself is very very sharp so you just run down the edges like here you can see all the lines so we just run carefully down the edges to remove the excess 
um, you can see here where there's some extra. Okay. And just carefully check the miniature. There's there's more down here. So you'll find these mole lines pretty much on everything. Okay, so ever so gently, just run down there. You can also use the back of the knife. Many people, you know, um, also say to use the back of the knife. But you have to be careful because then the blade is pointing towards you. So I much prefer to use the blade side. Um, and that way, so if your hand or your finger slips down the knife, which can sometimes happen if you're not being incredibly careful, you'll cut yourself. So you can see these little shavings there. But already you can see that the mole lines are going. So just nice and gently. Clean all that up. And then because we're going to be basing this, okay, I'm just going to take these little these little points off here. In order to do that though, put it flat on the cutting mat. Flat on the cutting mat. Cutting away from myself and just ever so gently taking those off so that they're flat. And then just giving them a little bit of a scrape. still there. Just gently shave some of that off. Okay. Like that. It's good to go. So just check it. You can see in here, inside here, a few more mole lines. Okay. Gently scraping the mole lines away. So as you can see, this isn't the fastest process, but it's time well spent. And the end result of doing this is well worth it. Okay, and then you just continue on with the other parts. All right. So as you can see down here, a few things. All right. So there you go, that's a, a very quick and dirty idea of, of how to remove the mole lines from your miniatures and just to tidy it up and make sure that it's nice and neat for painting. And as always with these plastic miniatures, once you've assembled them, it's a really good idea to give them a wash in warm soapy water and a bit of a scrub with a toothbrush um, because due to the, the moulding process <clears throat> there can be oils left on and also oils from your fingers and this, um, this can stop the paint from sticking to your miniature um, so it's a good idea to give them a, a wash in warm soapy water and then basically uh, let them dry thoroughly before you begin to paint. Okay, next we'll go on to assembling the miniature. Um, what I'll do is I'll just clean up the mole lines on the rest of these, this miniature and then we'll stick it together.
Okay, <clears throat> so when basing your miniature, uh, there's a couple of things that you're going to need. Um, obviously, these miniatures are going to come with their own bases. I don't have them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these MDF bases um, that I have for other things. Superglue. Uh, be careful with this stuff. Obviously it likes to bond fingers just as much as it likes to bond plastic. I like to use superglue simply because these miniatures will be for display. If you are using these for gaming, um, you may actually want to use something like an epoxy resin or a contact adhesive that will um, provide a much, much stronger bond. Superglue will tend to, to snap off there. Um, the trick to superglue is less is more. A tiny dob. Um, on his feet to hold him in place with um, with these particular miniatures when you're putting them together it's uh, probably a far better idea to use a poly cement uh, some form of plastic cement uh, this one's Humbrol um, which I actually dislike um, as you can see this should have a, a little sort of like needle like applicator um, that gummed up within about 23 seconds and um, it, it just I couldn't unblock it I tried everything um, so it was a bit of a pain um, and now it won't even come out of the tube um, there's another one on the market a revel one um, which is the one I normally get but they were out so I thought I'd use this, but sadly, um, yeah, it's just not in the same class. So if, um, if you are using a, a cement, like Citadel Miniatures obviously provides their own, um, as well as, um, you know, most of the other modeling companies. I, I, I quite like the, um, I quite like the Revel one. So... You don't need much of this stuff. Um, you don't want to use too much because obviously, if you do, it will come out of these of these parts. As you can see along here, you want to dry fit the parts first to make sure that they fit properly and that the the lines aren't too uh, you know there, there aren't too big a gap. If there are gaps, just go back. Have a look where they are, see if you can just shave it down a bit. Because there's obviously a bit of... There you go, I've missed a bit. Okay, so then normally with this stuff, you don't need much. And you need to be careful because it goes all stringy. You can see those strings there. Right, so just a little bit on the part. And you don't want so much that it's going to squeeze out, but you do want enough to make sure that there's a good bond. So it's hard to see, but I've hardly put any on there. There's just enough so that when I clip those parts together, they'll form a tight bond. Right, but there's no glue coming out at all. Um, you need to provide, just hold it for a couple of minutes for that, or a minute, you know, for that bond um, to take. The thing with this is you need to be very careful. The poly cement actually melts the two sides of the plastic together and, and joins them. So uh, it means once you've stuck this, little sucker it's never coming apart so you want to dry test it first dry fit it and make sure that it is right before you go because there's no coming back if you get it wrong you've ruined your miniature okay so the same here the ball where he um, is going to fit 
into the into the carapace there. So we just take a dab of glue on the miniature there. See how I'm not using all of it? I'm just using a little bit there. So there's just just a very light coating on there. It's hard to see. But there's just um there's just a very very light coating. Come on, focus. Okay. Um, where does he go? There he goes. So I'm there, and obviously you can oppose him. So I'm going to have this guy looking, I don't know, off into the distance maybe. So he's actually on an angle there. There he is. Uh, starting to go. Okay. So, and the same thing with the arms. So you leave him to dry for a little bit. I need a bit more glue because I've run out. I really hate this stuff. Sorry, humble. Um, and once again, just, it's quite a, a large amount of glue there, but we're not going to use it all. We're just going to put a tiny dob on the arm. Make sure if there's any stringy bits, you get rid of them. Just going to attach it to the miniature. Going to have his arm coming out a bit. Just make sure that's fitted well. And you want to have a look before it sets here and just see that the arm looks natural. So I want him to look like he's, you know, in the middle of turning around. So you want to think about the way you're going to pose it. Um, obviously, you don't want him doing something that um, he couldn't physically do in, well, real life. Okay, posing's half the battle. Um, then with this one, same again, just a little dob of glue. Not too much, just a little bit on there. You're really just wetting the surface there. You don't have to go crazy with this stuff, it's pretty good. Um, once again. Just hold it there for, whoops, see? Hold it there for a second. So you could be doing anything now. You could be jumping, running. It's quite a natural pose. Um, and the weapon, the weapon will attach to this hand. I'm pointing downwards. Okay, so he's whipping it around to shoot some orc in the face. Um, and his his head will go in there. So, but 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 base. That's the first the first basic. Um, preparation of your of your miniature before you do anything else. So remove the mold lines, get rid of the flashing, pose the miniature. This has worked exactly the same for metal, metal miniatures as well, except um, they're actually quite a lot easier. To, it's, you can be a lot rougher with a metal miniature without causing them any damage. Okay, so please see the next tutorial, um, which is priming your model.